Good day everyone, I am Christina Cassandra Cesar from Davao Doctors College and today I will be demonstrating an assessment of the thorax and lungs. As we all know, airway and breathing are the most important priority in the management of the severely injured patient. So, this assessment should be completed as part of a comprehensive assessment and it can help detect um, problems before they become emergencies. So let's proceed to the pre-introductory phase. So first is to review the client's previous medical records if available. This is done in order for us to know the previous medical history of the patient to provide focus for the physical assessment of our patient. Next is to determine the scope of assessment and prepare all the necessary equipments needed. So this is done for us to be able to know the extent of our physical assessment and also preparing all the necessary equipment saves time and energy and helps us to have a smooth flow of assessment. So the, equip the equipments needed are the following. So first we're going to be needing this examination gun and drape which will be used by the client so that they can be easily identified in the hospital and also to minimize the risk of infection and it is used to cover the sensitive parts of their body. Next is a pair of gloves and the surgical mask. So this will be used to as a protective equipment to protect ourselves from infection. Next, stethoscope because I am going to be um, auscultating my client's breathing and lung sounds. Then we we also need a light source because adequate lighting enhances visualization of the assessed parts. And we also need to use the skin markers for the marking of the diaphragmatic exertion and this metric ruler for measuring the differences of the diaphragmatic exertion. And we also need to use this um, um, alcohol for to deter the spread of microorganisms. So now I'm going to perform hand washing and done my done gloves if only if it is necessary. So this is done to avoid cross contamination and to protect the nurse and the client. Okay, so now since our patient is already here, the first thing that we're going to do is to greet the client politely and the client's companion if around. Because welcoming the client and the client's companion help them to feel at ease and less frightened. Okay, so good day sir, please take a seat whenever you feel comfortable. Okay, also introduce yourself and verify the client's identity. Because introducing self is an essential interaction because it forms the basis of therapeutic nurse-patient relationship. And verifying the client's identity is done to make sure that the assessment is being done to the correct client. Okay, so um, good day, sir. I am Christina Cassandra Cesar, your student nurse for today. Um, can you please state your complete name and your birthday for me, please? Okay, thank you. Then after that, since we already verified the client's identity using the two identifiers, I'm going to ask how the client would like to be called during the assessment and establish rapport with the client. Because clients from different cultural backgrounds may have certain expectations about how to address one another. And establishing rapport with the client makes them feel comfortable and less anxious. Okay, so sir, um, how do you like me to call you Paul? Dave. Okay, Dave. So now explain the procedure to the client and how he can participate during the assessment. Because explaining what to do reduces apprehension and facilitates cooperation. It also promotes the client's autonomy. So, um, good day, sir. Today, um, the procedure that we will be doing is the assessment of the thorax and lungs. So, here, this assessment will involve um, inspecting, palpating, percussing, and auscultating your posterior and anterior thorax and lungs. Also, um, I will be instructing you to stand, um, bend, take a deep breath, and say some words in order for me to assess your lungs properly. Would that be okay to you? Yes. Okay, that's good. Then provide the client the opportunity to clarify, ask, or raise any concern because clear communication and providing the client with a chance to ask questions is essential for informed consent and to ensure that the client is comfortable and informed through, throughout the assessment. Okay, so um, before we proceed to the proper assessment, sir, do you have any questions to clarify? Okay, that's good to hear. Now, ensure the client's comfort, privacy, and confidentiality. Assessment settings should be safe, secured, and free from distractions because providing for the client's privacy protects the client's integrity and it enhances their comfort. So, sir, um, I just ask if you are comfortable in that position right now. Yes. 
Okay, so as you can see, sir, I've already closed the curtains and the door for your privacy. So before we start with the assessment, I assure you that all the data and information that will be gathered will remain confidential and will be used only by the healthcare and medical provider. So would that be, would that be okay to you, sir? Yes. Okay, so that's great. So I have here your um, examination gown. Um, please take off your shirt and please wear this. Thank you. Okay, so since our patient is already wearing the um, examination gown, let's proceed to the working phase, which is surveying the chest and respiration. So first, check for signs of respiratory distress, such as nasal flaring, first lip breathing, and retractions or problems with oxygenation. Also, observe for the color of the lips, chest, and fingernails, because various respiratory patterns have localizing significance in the patient with altered consciousness. Okay, so um, sir, may I ask if you have experienced difficulty breathing? Oh, no. Okay, so um, let me, can I see your fingernails? Okay, in your face, your lips, and your chest. Okay, so after that, I'll also palpate between the collarbone, which is the suprasternal notch, and note for the position of the trachea. So I'm going to touch your trachea, so is it okay? Okay, so let's proceed in examining the posterior thorax and lungs. So first, inspect for configuration. Now, I'll ask the client to stand with their arms at the side. And then I will stand up behind the client and observe the position of scapula and the shape and configuration of the chest wall. So this will help me to have a better visualization of the client's scapula. So sir, um, can you please stand? Okay, so I'll be standing um, behind you. And can you please put your arms on the side? Okay. Okay, thank you. So now, I will, I will inspect for spinal alignment for the formities. So first, inspect for the three normal curvatures, which are the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar from lateral position. So this is done to determine any abnormal curvatures of the spine. Okay, thank you. Okay, now in assessing for lateral deviation of the spine or scoliosis, observe the client from the rear and have the client to bend forward at the waist and observe from behind. So doing this could provide information about the alignment and integrity of the spine. Um, so sir, can you please bend forward? Okay, so I will I will check for the for your three curvatures, okay? Okay, so you can stand straight now. Thank you. Now Next is to palpate the posterior thorax. So assess the skin, um, assess the skin temperature and integrity of all chest skin. Then um, palpate all thorax areas for bulges, tenderness, or abdominal mo abnormal movements, rather, especially for the clients who have respiratory complaints. So I'm um, sorry, you can sit here. Thank you. So I will palpate your chest skin integrity and check for the temperature and tenderness. Okay, so I'm going to palpate using the dorsal part of my hands or the back part of our hands. Okay, so do you feel um, pain when I am palpating your back, sir? No. Okay, so the temperature is uniform and there are no bulges and tenderness. Just good. So now, let's proceed in palpating for the posterior thorax for respiratory exertion or the thoracic expansion. So in palpating the thoracic expansion, place the palms of your both hands over the lower thorax or the T9 to D10 with, with your thumbs adjacent to the spine and your fingers stretched lateral. Then, ask the client to take a deep breath while you observe the movement uh, of your hands and any lock in movement. So this is done to observe the movement of the thoracic diaphragm during breathing. Okay, so sir, can you please stand? Okay, so I'll stand right behind you. Okay, so can you please um take a, can you please take a deep breath? Okay, thank you. Okay, so now let's proceed in palpating the thorax for vocal tactile fremitus, the faintly perceptible vibration. Okay, so sir, you can sit down. Okay, so, okay, so in doing that, um, place the palmar surfaces of your fingertips or the ulnar aspect of your hand or closed fist on, e on a posterior thorax starting near the apex of the lungs. Then ask the client to repeat such words such as um, blue moon or one, two, three. Then repeat two steps, moving your hand sequentially to the base of the lungs. Start toward the midline at the level of the left scapula over the, or over the apex of the left lung. And move your hand um, left to right, comparing findings by lottery. 
then um, move symmetri symmetrically downward and out to cover the lateral portions of the lungs at the bases. So um, this is done to, uh, to assess the, in the increase or decrease of lung density. Then compare the fermitus on both lungs and between the apex and the base of each lung. Using either one hand and moving it from one side of the client to the corresponding area on the other side or using two hands that are placed simultaneously on the corresponding areas of each side of the torus. So this will allow us allow us for the identification of any asymmetry or differences in vibration, which may indicate underlying respiratory issues such as consolidation or pleural effusion. Okay, so sir, I will assess your tactile from this and every time you feel my hand uh, on your back, can you please say blue moon? Okay, so let's start now, okay? Okay, thank you. After that is to percuss the posterior thorax. So in doing that, ask the client to bend their head and fold their arms forward across the chest because it separates the scapula and exposes more lung tissue to percuss. Then percuss in the intercostal space at about 5 cm intervals in a systematic sequence and compare one side of the lung with the other and percuss the lateral thorax every few inches, starting at the axilla and working down to the apron. So this is done to assess for lung resonance. So sir, can you do this and bend your head? Okay, so I'm going to percuss now, okay? Thank you. Then after that, uh, measure the measure the diaphragmatic excursion. So in doing that, use percussion to identify the level of the diaphragm and measure diaphragmatic excursion. Then percuss downwards from um, above the expected level of diaphragmatic dullness until dullness is definitely heard. So doing this can provide information about diaphragmatic function and can be helpful in identifying any changes um, in diaphragmatic movement, which may ind indicate respiratory issues or diaphragmatic dysfunction. Then after that, mark the level of full expiration of, or after gaining the patient's permission for the marking. Because marking the level of full expiration allows allows for comparison with, with other percussion findings and can provide a reference point for further assessment. So, sir, um, I'll be using a, the, a washable marker to do some markings on your back. Would that be okay with you, sir? Yes. Okay, so um, can, you please, um, in, can you please inhale, exhale, then hold. Okay, so I'm going to percuss now, okay? So, okay, so you're going to breathe normally. Then, after the first marking, ask the patient to inhale deeply and hold it in and percuss it downward to the level of dullness and full inspiration, then mark it. So, sir, can you please inhale, exhale, inhale deeply, then hold. I'm going to percuss now, okay? Okay, so after that, we're going to measure the expiration and inspiration with this ruler. Okay, so lastly is to repeat the process on the other side and measure the distance between the expiratory and inspiratory levels of dullness because re repeating the process on the other side allows for bilateral comparison of percussion findings and helps identify any asymmetry or differences in percussion note. Measuring the distance between the expirat expiratory and inspiratory levels of dullness can provide information about diaphragmatic exertion and can be helpful in assessing diaphragmatic function and respiratory mobi mobility. So, sir, I will do the, exa the exact same procedure on the other side, okay? So, can you please inhale? Exhale, then hold. Okay, so I'm going to percuss now. Okay, so you cannot breathe normally. 
then inhale, exhale, inhale deeply, then hold it. Then I'm going to measure the expiration and inspiration with this rule. Okay, so now after that, after percussing, I'm going to oscillate for breath sounds. So in doing that, place the place the diaphragm of the stethoscope. This one, the big part. Um, we're going to place it um, firmly and directly on the posterior chest wall at the apex of the lung at C7 because proper placement of the stethoscope is essential to accurately oscillate wind sounds at the apex of the lungs. Then ask the client to breathe deeply through their mouth for each area of oscillation because um, deep breathing helps to elicit clear and distinct breath sounds for assessment. And use the systematic ladder pattern used in percussion. Listen at each point to the breath sounds during a complete inspiration and expiration. Also, compare the findings at each point with the corresponding point on the opposite side of the thorax. Now, locate, um, note that the location on the chest wall where adventitious sounds are heard as well as the location of such sounds within the respiratory cycle. So, this is done to assess for airflow through the airways. Okay, so, sir, I'm going to use my stethoscope for your breath sounds. And um, whenever you feel the stethoscope on your back, um, can you please um, deep breathe through your mouth? Okay, very good. So, let's start. Now, um, after that, I'll still for voice sounds with the same pattern. So now I'll do the bronchophony. So bronchophony is a vocal resonance test that can help detect abnormal transmission of voice sounds through the lung tissue, which may indicate lung pathology. So sir, I'm going to auscultate your voice sounds using the same pattern. Okay, so can you say 99 repeatedly whenever you feel the steps go on your back? Okay, so okay, so let's start. So I'll just use the same pattern. Can you please say 99? 99. Thank you. So now, um, next I'll do the egophony. So egophony is another vocal um, resonance test that can provide important information about the presence of a lung abnormality and its location. Okay, so now um, I'll, I'll do the same pattern, but this time can you please say um, letter E whenever you feel the stethoscope on your back? Okay, so let's start. You say letter E. And after that, and lastly, I'll do the whispered um whispered pectoriloquy using the same pattern. So whispered pectoriloquy is a test where the client whispers while the while the nurse listens to evaluate for the presence of lung consolidation. Okay, so sir, lastly, um, can you please whisper the phrase one, two, three repeatedly whenever you feel the stethoscope on your back? Okay, so let's start. So I'll just use the same pattern. Can you please say one, two, three? One, two, three. 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 Okay, thank you so much, sir. So now let's proceed in assessing the anterior thorax. But before that, I need to wear my surgical mask. Okay, so now in assessing the anterior thorax, I'll um, inspect the breathing patterns of the client by observing the respiratory rate and rhythm. Okay, so sir, I'll just do some observations in your thorax. Okay, just breathe normal.
Okay, so thank you. Then, after that, inspect the coastal angle or the angle formed by intersection of the coastal margins and the angle at which the ribs enters the spine. So, this is done to evaluate the expansion of the thoracic cage. Okay, sir, I'm going to inspect the coastal angle of your rib. Um, can you please stand? Okay, so now I'm going to inspect and can you breathe normally? Okay, thank you. Now, after that, let's proceed in completing the anterior thorax for tenderness sensation, surfaces, masses, or cubicles. So, doing that, use your fingers to palpate for tenderness and sensation. Start palpating with your hand position over the left clavicle, over the apex of the left thumb, and move your hand left to right, comparing the findings bilaterally. So, um, sir, I'm going to touch your, I'm going to touch your chest area later. Is it okay with you? Yes. Okay, so now I will move, I will move my hand um, systematically downward toward the midline at the level of the breast and outward at the um, at the base to in include the lateral aspect of the lung and repeat the sequence in palpating for crepitus and firmitus in the anterior thorax. So, sir, I will now palpate, okay? So, we're going to start here on your left lung. You should you feel pain when I'm palpating? Okay, thank you. Now, after that, palpate the anterior thorax for respiratory exertion or excursion. And doing that, um, place the palms of both of your hands on the lower thorax or the P9 to P10 with your fingers laterally along the ribcage and your thumbs along the coastal margins. Then ask the client to take a deep breath while observing the movements of your hand. So, um, sir, I'm going to touch this side of your abdomen. Is it okay with you? Yes. Okay, so now, can um, you please take a deep breath? Again. Okay, thank you. So you can now breathe normally and sit. Thank you, sir. So after that, um, percuss the anterior thorax systematically. So begin percussing above the clavicles in the supra supraclavicular space and proceed downward to the diaphragm. Compare the lung on one side to the lung on the other side. This plays a um, female breast to facilitate percussion of the lungs if your patient is female. So this is done to assess lung resonance. Okay, so sir, now I'm going to percuss your collarbone down to your diaphragm. Is it okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start now. Okay, thank you. So um, this time I am going to auscultate your trachea. So I'm going to use the stethoscope again and auscultate the trachea. Okay, thank you. So now after that I'm going to auscultate the anterior thorax. So Place again the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly and directly on the anterior chest wall. Then auscultate from the abyssals of the lungs slightly above the clavicles to the bases of the lungs at the sixth rib. Then ask the client to breathe deeply through the mouth in an effort to avoid transmission of sounds that may occur with nasal breathing. Okay, so I'm sure I'm going to auscultate your lungs. Um, I want you to, I mean, I want you to breathe deeply through your mouth every time you feel this stethoscope on your body. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, so um, before that, I'm going to listen at each side for at least um, one complete respiratory cycle. Then listen for normal breathe sounds and advanced tissues breathe sounds. And follow the systematic bladder patterns. Okay, so sir, can you breathe, Can you please um, take a deep breath through your mouth whenever you feel the stethoscope? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to start now. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, sir. So now um, we're done with the assessment. Um, thank you so much, and you can now change your clothes and get back here for the result, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, lastly, um, after doing all those assessments that we already that we did earlier, I will summarize the information that I have obtained during the working phase and discuss findings to the client. Also discuss to the client the possible plans to resolve their health concerns if present. Okay, so um, sir, you can take a seat and I will summarize the information that I have gathered and further discuss to you my findings during our assessment, okay? Okay, so let's start. So with regards to inspecting your 
configuration, um, your scapula are symmetric and non protruding your, your shoulders and your scapula are equal, which is good. And for your spinal alignment, this one, your spine is vertically aligned and spinal column is straight. And your right and left shoulders and hips are at the same height, which is good. And with regards to palp and palpating for your posterior thorax, um, the integrity and temperature of the skin is normal. Your skin is intact and it has a uniform temperature. There are no masses, tenderness, or, or bulges palpated, which is normal. And for your vocal tactile trepidus, when, when we were palpating it, um, it is bilateral, symmetrically of vocal trepidus, and your trepidus is felt mostly clearly at the apex of the lungs. And for your lung resonance, um, the resonance was here, um, which is good and normal. It is a good indicator. So for your airflow, I heard um, vesicular breath sounds, which is also good and normal. Now for your anterior thorax, beside, um, for your breathing patterns, um, your respiratory rate is 16 cycles per minute. And your coastal angle is less than 90 degree, which is normal. And with regards to palpation for your chest expansion, um, it is full and symmetric expression. Now, lastly, for your vocal tactile primitus, um, it is bilateral symmetric of vocal primitus. Okay, so I guess that's all for summarization. So next, I'm going to give you some advice and suggestions regarding to your health cancer. So first, um, I suggest you don't smoke and um, avoid harmful environmental factors such as smoke, dust, and chemicals because it will affect your lungs. And also, you have to maintain eating healthy such as healthy foods and vegetables. Okay, so also you have to have an active lifestyle wherein you will um, perform exercise regularly and don't forget to get regular checkups to monitor your, your lungs. And lastly, you have to um, have enough rest and sleep, okay? Okay, so after that, um, assess for clients' understanding of the plan and the need for further teaching. So, provide, after, um, provide the client the opportunity to clarify, ask, or raise any concern for me to be able to know if there's still more information that my client would like to know more about. So, I'm um, sure you understand the plans about resolving your health concerns. Yes. Okay, so for me to be able to know that you really, or for me to be able to assess that you really knows and understand what to do in regards to your um, health concern, um, can you please restate the suggestions and advice that I've given to you earlier? So don't smoke, eat healthy, have a rest, yes. have a regular checkup, and also exercise. Very good. So I guess you really understand what to do. So after that, I'm going to ask my client if there's still more information that you'd like to know more, know more about. So sir, um, if you have any concerns or clarifications, um, you can ask and clarify, and I am open to discuss it with you. So everything is understandable. Okay, that's good to hear. So um, I just want to thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your trust and cooperation throughout the assessment. I really appreciate your time and effort for doing this assessment today. So take care and have a good day. Thank you. Okay, so after that, um, do an aftercare and perform hand hygiene using alcohol. So first, I'm going to do the aftercare of all the equipment that I've used. Then perform hand hygiene using alcohol. So this is done to deter the spread of microorganisms. Then, since I've already sanitized my hands, I will now document findings in the client record using printed or electronic forms or checklists supplemented by narrati narrative notes when appropriate. Okay, lastly, I'm document findings in the client record using printed or electronic forms or checklists supplemented by narrative notes when appropriate. Okay, so it is important to document all the relevant and pertinent observations because if it is not documented, then it only means that it is not done. Okay, so I guess that's all for the assessment of thorax and lungs. And I hope you learned something and that's it. And thank you for watching.